Guys, my amaranth that I put out here the other day is already so eaten up by bugs. A lot of times whenever you put things out and you notice that it's starting to get some bug damage, it's really easy to kind of freak out and you're like, oh no, you know, this is gonna die. But a lot of times whenever you start getting bug damage at the beginning, it'll grow out of it. Like those first few leaves will get eaten some, but you don't even necessarily always have to do anything about it. Sometimes the plant will just grow new leaves and be fine. So I don't know that my sunflowers that had started to come in with variegation on the leaves, a lot of these lower leaves, I don't know if they're gonna keep having variegation. It seems like the newer leaves don't. Kind of a bummer, but we'll see. You can see this one. I am curious to see what they look like. I'm still gonna let them grow. A lot of people will ask me like tips and tricks to organic gardening because I don't put uh, any sort of like chemical pesticides on my garden. And so people wanna know like what are the tips? And I'll share like the different organic pest control that you can use. But that's actually not the number one thing that I do to manage my garden organically. The number one thing is I plant more than I need. And the number two thing is I get used to eating food that has holes in it. And then on top of that, then I use those, those uh, organic pest control. But a lot of organic pest control just requires very frequent application. And um, I would rather eat food with holes on it than spend a whole bunch of time putting stuff on the garden. So just personal preference there. Here I've got summer squash coming up all down here. This stuff grows so fast. Like this little plant here will be giving us food in less than two months. So cool. Oh, those are sunflowers. Take a look at my first tomatoes that I planted. I have already started pruning these and pulling suckers, but they're growing so fast that I already see multiple suckers. I have a video about this that I'll put down below if you want more clear instruction. I'm just gonna show you really quickly right now. It's really not that hard. It doesn't even warrant a whole video, but I did explain it more in depth. But do you see this little stem right here that's growing away from the main stem of this plant? This is called a sucker, is what we call these in tomato language. And it's growing here in the armpit of this plant. There, That's a sucker, that's a sucker. This is actually a sucker that got big, and I'm just gonna leave it now. So when you prune your tomato plants down, you pull these off, okay? If you're new here, I have lots and lots of information out about growing tomatoes. I love to grow tomatoes. Um, maybe I'll just link a few videos about growing tomatoes, how to plant them, how to prune them, and how to root suckers. So basically, if this was left on the plant, it would grow a whole nother like main them off to the side and it would set flowers um, and fruit would grow on this. By pruning these down where you only have like one or two main stems like on this one where that one sucker got away from me I'll just let that grow. By pruning these down uh, you do get less fruit that's true but you can grow more plants in uh, the same amount of space because they'll have airflow and so with indeterminate varieties like this that get really tall I prune them down and let them get tall and you get bigger fruit a lot of times because though there's less fruit on your plant, your, your plant is able to really put its energy into the fruit that it is growing. Since you can grow more plants and get larger fruit, it doesn't ultimately cost you quite as much harvest as it might seem at first. But tomatoes root super, super easily, okay? So all these little hairs on here and these little bumps, if this were to just like fall on the ground connected to the plant, it would root all down into the ground. And so what you can do with these suckers whenever you prune them off, you can stick them directly in the ground. And if you're keeping your ground moist, they'll just take root in the ground. Uh, if you want better chances, especially if it's hot or maybe dry, uh, you can stick these in a cup of water and they'll start growing roots within about seven days. You don't have to put any rooting hormone in the water, but you can if you wanna try to speed it up. And uh, once they have roots, you can put them into some soil. Do keep in mind if they've been in your house for a couple weeks, 
growing roots and you put them out you kind of need to keep that hardening off thing in mind so putting them into some soil and then reacclimating them to outdoors over the course of a couple of days and then putting them in soil but you can take one tomato plant like this and once it starts getting suckers I mean you can make 10 plants off of it by rooting them in fact right now um, at least for me I know some of you guys are just really getting these kinds of things in but here where I live where it's a little warmer you can get started plants for cheap right now I'm gonna stick that one in and we'll see what happens you can get started plants for cheap at stores because um, you know it's getting towards the end of the time here where we really ideally plant those and if you get a started plant a lot of times if it's been growing in that pot at the store for a little while it'll already have suckers on it so you can take one started plant pull off all the suckers and root them and get multiple plants for your money so usually with my plants I will pull off the first blossoms now these plants are big enough now I usually pull off the blossoms until they get at least tall enough to the trellis but I decided this year I'm not pulling off any early blossoms I'm just gonna let them start setting fruit as soon as possible because I am moving <laughs> the end of July the first week of August and I want to eat as many tomatoes as I can this year look at this plant this is the one that got a little damaged by the frost but it's coming back pretty well now all these little puny guys here are from the transplants that I started and they got so tall and even planting them deep they've still like stretched up. I'm not worried about them. They're still going to grow just fine. Tomato plants are so resilient. So uh, though they look a little, they don't look like much right now. I think that they are going to still give me lots of food. So you guys are going to be seeing this vid video on Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all of you mamas, either um, mamas that have birthed or raised babies or mamas who have stood in place where uh, there needed to be a mama. Happy Mother's Day to you. We actually don't do like massive things for holidays like this. We usually try to keep a culture of honor going throughout the year, but usually we we try to do on on like i call them greeting card holidays but like mother's day and father's day and valentine's day and all that we do at least acknowledge one another and try to make people make each other feel special but i do remember a time in my life where that you know those greeting those greeting card holidays they're easy to blow off when you're very satisfied and you're very fulfilled and you're very celebrated and they're a little harder to let go of when you're you know desperately wanting to be validated in that way so i know it can be a hard day for a lot of people and um and i just wanted to encourage you guys and say even in the seasons where you might not feel seen in the laboring that you're doing over uh, raising sons and daughters and whatever capacity that might look like uh, you're sowing seeds and a lot of times what legacy looks like is uh, sowing in a season where it costs you something and so I, I hope that today you are celebrated and if you are feeling a void in that today I hope that you will catch a glimpse in your heart of the legacy that you've sown into and and see that there will be harvest for it. Hey guys, y'all want some roses? I, I get all of the like almost falling apart roses and throw them to the goats because they love the rose petals so much. There you go. This rose is lovely. This is the, oh, I think it's Lady of Shallot which is David Austin, and it is just so, so pretty. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I know those of you who are not rose people are probably this last week on my channel like enough with the roses, but is there really ever enough with the roses? <laughs> I really am enjoying my last season with these. I'm planning on taking cuttings. I did find out, um, and I thought some of you might like to know this, my arbor rose the pretty orange one around the gate that's a tangerine skies arbor rose and after the incident 
of one of my David Austin roses, the rootstock started to grow up and produce sucker roses. I started wondering like what of my roses are growing on rootstock and what are growing on their own roots. And I found out that the Tangerine Sky Arbor Rose, from what I read online, and this could be wrong, but from what I read online, that actually grows on its own roots. I'm gonna be taking cuttings and rooting cuttings of all of them. So I'm just gonna try experimentation, right? I actually was in my garden yesterday taking some lovely photos of all the different things. They're just so beautiful. Are they a tasty snack, Dr. Ennis? You sweet boy. Are you waiting for another? Oh my. These were barely heading up like a week ago. This is nice. I'm gonna have more cabbage soon. I was noticing this morning that I think I'm probably gonna go ahead and start working these broccolis into my meal plan. This head is not nearly as big as this would be if it was growing in the fall, but it's warm and I'm starting to notice that these little buds are just getting slightly loose, which means this is gonna flower soon. So we need to eat it before it flowers. And I suspect that some of these other ones, though they're still really small, probably will go a similar way. They probably won't get real big, which is okay. I'm happy to have gotten anything off of them. Growing them in the spring is such a gamble here. So I know for a lot of people this will be very obvious, but I do think it is worth saying for those that don't know it. But when you eat a head of broccoli, you're actually eating a massive flower head. So each one of these little bits that get stuck in your teeth, so each, each one of those is a little flower bud. And when and when this flowers it gets really big uh, and it spreads out and opens up all of these tiny flowers i'm pretty sure this massive frankenstein brassica was actually a purple sprouting broccoli and i think that's why i missed it uh flowering i just I, I wasn't quite sure what it was and after the fact I started thinking about what has been here in years past and I'm pretty sure that's what this was. This is one seed that volunteered into this one plant that is was a purple sprouting broccoli and so had I caught it in time each one of these would have been a little floret of broccoli and the way that these go to seed they just put off these little uh, pods and if you were trying to grow brassicas and you planted them too late in a warm climate you might not get a harvest like radishes a lot of different things they'll they'll go straight to seed but the pods here are really tasty and they taste like the brassica that you're growing that's actually what made me realize that this was broccoli because these taste like broccoli these ones on the bottom had gotten a little bit tough they're kind of stringy but if you pick these when they first develop and they're still really soft they're very very good you can eat them like in salads i'll take handfuls of them and eat them like snap peas they're kind of small but um or you can saute them or put them in stir fry or whatever so a lot of people have a hard time growing radishes because they will go so quickly to seed if it's warm i think radishes are as worth growing for the pods as they are for the roots because if you let one radish seed which would develop one root if you were picking its eat the roots if you let that go to seed you'll get handfuls of pods off of that one plant and they taste just like radishes and so it's kind of like one way to get food out of those seeds versus just harvesting the roots it takes longer but it is good especially if you live somewhere where uh, growing root vegetables might be a struggle because of the weather i'll probably be harvesting green beans soon off of my little volunteer beans isn't that wild how fast those grow? I always do this when I can't shoot garden tours. I end up coming out here and showing you half the garden. I wanted to do one today and I had to run errands. I didn't get back in time. Tomorrow's going to be raining all day. This is glorious. This is chamomile and it is so lovely. So I haven't harvested any of this. I was out here taking photos of it yesterday for something. And um, it is time for me to go ahead and start harvesting. But whenever you grow chamomile like this, you can harvest these flowers and dry them. You just pluck these off. The best time to harvest any sort of flowers for drying is in the morning. And you pluck them off and just lay them flat on like a towel. I, I just lay a flower sack towel out on the counter. Or if I have space, I'll put oh my gosh i love chamomile if i have space i'll put a uh flower sack towel in the pantry and i'll just let these things dry out in the pantry i actually have a video about harvesting and drying chamomile also i'll find that and link it as well i've done videos about so many things but sometimes they're hard to find 
over the years. It's wild when I walk around this farm to realize that we've been, we've been building this for seven years now. And it's even crazier for me to wrap my head around the fact that we've been sharing it with you guys consistently for about four. Um, we'd made some videos before then, like the couple years before then, but really started getting consistent with it. This is our fourth season, fourth year to be consistently sharing. It's just wild for me. But chamomile is a really, really lovely thing to grow. Uh, it can be kind of a, a booger to get started. Like it, it's, it's fussy to germinate sometimes. Um, the main thing that I've found with germination is make sure you're not planting the seeds too deep. I mean, literally, I just sow really heavily. I just sow a lot of seeds at surface level on damp soil. And that usually does the trick. I, I don't even like work them in. I just kind of sprinkle them along the top of the soil. Uh, it comes back. I didn't sow this this year. This came back on its own and I've got it in multiple different places that's coming back. And once you have it, you'll, you know, you'll continue to have it if you put it in a place where you're not going to weed it out. And as with anything that flowers, um, the more you pick the flowers, the more flowers you get. Because plants, um, this, this doesn't know that it's growing to give me my favorite bedtime tea. When I smell chamomile, it is one of those like scent association things that immediately like I'm in my bed <laughs> with a cup of honeyed chamomile tea and I'm unplugged and I'm about to read or talk with sweet Maya it just it's my downtime and so when I smell chamomile that's the association it's a nice it's a nice it's a nice place to go in my mind <laughs> But this plant doesn't know that it, that's why I'm growing it, to take me to that place. It is growing for one purpose, same reason all these other plants are going, to make seed and reproduce. That's why plants grow. So, for flowers, unlike that broccoli that I showed you that had sprouted and it produces those pods, the way that flowers work is they produce a flower and then it dries up. And behind where the flower was it produces its seeds once it dries up long past the point that it's pretty and once those seeds are produced it just shuts down because it did its job that's the only reason why that plant is growing is to produce seeds and so for this the more you pick these flowers um, the more it's going to keep trying to make them so you want to pick them in this stage early and pull them off uh, fully and dry them and do whatever it is that you're gonna do with them and, and it'll keep trying so you'll get more flowers. Here's more chamomile that I actually did sow this year. I threw these seeds down here, I don't know, some months ago. I'm thinking I might just take all these blank spaces and just completely fill them up with something that's an annual that will fill the space out, but, uh, and also reseed, because that's really what you want to do in a cottage garden space. And that way, if Jill wants to do something perennial in those spaces, she can. I mean, she can always weed out anything that volunteers, but now it'll keep the soil covered, which will keep weeds from growing. We just threw some straw down in here uh, because the weeds were so intense. But ideally, having something growing over those places is really the best thing to keep the weeds down. Well, it is getting dark. It's darker than the camera conveys, but thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight on this little impromptu not a garden tour. I hope you're having a beautiful Mother's Day. I bless you. Until next time.